Jump and go by everything! Come on my channel sometime, man, if you want to chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got a good man, man. Cool, like, cool, cool, cool. Man. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Don't lose track easier, so you're gonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. Cool, man, cool. All right, cool. Um, cool. Man, like Ralph. What am I saying? The last conversation I saw you and. Uh, Good afternoon, Leon. God bless you. I hope you're well this afternoon. Yes. What's the name you go by now? Yeah, yeah. My name's uh, Abdi Kwani. Uh, my YouTube channel is Systematic 365. So log on to that channel and hopefully I'm going to get more content. What's it called? Systematic? Sy Syst Systematic 365. That's like my Systematic alias. Systematic 365. That's my alias YouTube name, but my real name's Abdi Kwani. And I listen in the building. Hail Lister! Hail Lister! Inconsistent, apparent inconsistencies. The apparent inconsistencies that we know also around. So, so, for, so for, for all our boys there, Leon is going to give me a little interrogation. Shall I? aiming to get clarity, truth, and, and truth to be more apparent for all who may bear with well, us. <laughs> That's what we want, right? <laughs> Boom! That's what we want. Um, so, he was having an interesting conversation with. Um, Abby, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had an interesting conversation with Abby last, um, last week. I was, I, I watched the replay. I wasn't there live. If I was there live, I would have made sure the camera stayed. Especially after when Ralph left and you asked um, the white man to speak for himself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. To see if he shares his opinion. But one thing that was interesting to me is um, when he was explaining um, how you intend to bring about uh, a situation where we can have open and frank, honest discussions about some of the issues regarding race yeah. or similar topics that we currently are not able to have right. because censorship of the left. Being accused yeah. of being called a racist. Correct. So, like, Lister will make videos about you and stuff. Yeah. So, so, you said your method was to um, <laughs> desensitize people from Correct. words like nigger and packy by using them yeah. Yeah, as you, satire. You, you, you didn't really explain the as satire. Mm. So if you look at satire as a form of intellectual pursuit, so satire has been used throughout the centuries across the Enlightenment, usually using traditionally things like animals to characterize people as symbols and use those symbols to show the absurdity. It was used to challenge the powerful. It was used to challenge the emperors, right? It was used to say, look, I can use ridicule and mocking you as a way of bringing out issues. Uh, Ralph, let, let, me, let me get you up to where, where exactly I want to continue. Have you replied that you seem to be very intellectual yourself? So you're, in comparison to general people that we've discussed with, I would say that's what you want. Take how you want it. I'm just trying to keep observant. So, you could grasp the concept and see the value in what you understand. Absolutely. Whereas, so let me give you an example. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, take wait, wait, wait. I know you like to say this finishing my thoughts. I've already done. I don't. I don't want you to do that in this. You can, you can finish them in your mind, but so, so people that are listening can understand exactly what I'm trying to get. At. Oh, take your time. So. Um, Generally, the general people, they might not um, go as deep in their understanding of what you're trying to do. They might interpret what you're saying as, let's go around calling, calling people nigger and packy, so we can, so, 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 so we won't be called racist and we can just talk about whatever. They might not want to have intellectual conversations further than just wanting to express nigger and packy. So basically what I'm saying is, even though your ambition is to bring about a reality where we can have these conversations that need to be had, what actually might happen is a return to when we first came over and rim rush and stuff like that, where people just expressing themselves with the impression, with the intent of expressing their resentment for other people and using these words just a means of expressing their resentment. It could be anything. Don't have to be nigga. They just want to let people know that they don't like it. Yeah. And then as a result, violence ensues. So this seems like it will be the more likely reality outcome that will come about as a result of everybody that's called each other bad days. So I don't know what you say to that. Let me answer this way. So because we have the left and Antifa present here. So when I referenced earlier a while ago, Eric Gans, who I was lucky to have seen at Stanford and down at UCLA, when you look at the history of words and speech, how did they come about? So in the reaction you write, we in generative, understand through generative and thought anthropology, the language itself is linked to the way the mind is wired up and went through three stages of evolution. From that, there was first the extensive form of language where the chimps, so imagine a time between five million years ago and our last form of being humans where we did not speak. 
Now, romantically imagine the originary scene where we first spoke. What was the boundary between those who did not speak and those that spoke? And I went through three phases where we mimetically wired our brain. The first time was we spoke by pointing. I said, uh, uh. Eventually, we gave people orders, sit, up, come, fight, beat. And then finally, we got to what's called declarative language, like the sky is blue or Muhammad is not a prophet. I mean, we can make statements about the world at large. But how do we, I'm answering your question, but how do we get that speech? What happened to the chimps? What happened with speech? In that original scene, we would have come across with a bunch of chimps and seen something we competed over. It could have been a mate, it could have been a resource, like a piece of food. And the first thing we would have done is the baiters would have gone up the hierarchy and fought for the right to eat or the right to mate. And that fighting would have gone up and up and up until suddenly there would have been violence, would have finished, exhausted itself. And at one point there was the originary gesture, the first sign. So the first sign to stop fighting. So the first sign to stop fighting. Stop fighting to stop fighting and start talking. Yeah. So the so the language came about stages one, two, three, pointing, instructing, and looking. And the chimp started by fighting, attacking, and then talking to stop fighting, speaking as a substitute for violence. Back to your answer your question in that framework of the use of the word nigger or paki in free speech. What is it meant to be? It's meant to be an offensive word, a sound, that is meant to be met with either violence or no violence. So what is the ultimate stage of evolution? Is no violence from speech. And to answer your question, what if some people just use that speech to perform violence, right? That's the idea. Correct. So now the question then becomes, what is the resolution of that conflict? How does that gesture of speech and violence achieve peace? It achieves peace by removing speech from violence and negotiating that peace through words, right? So, yeah. so if you say this word cannot be said, then the rule should be no one says the word. You can't just say some people can say the word. Either no one says it, and let's say we agree no one uses the word or everyone uses the word. What's wrong with the camp no one uses the word? You're book burned. You've told all the humans not to think a thought or say a word. You've performed book burning. What if everyone says the word? You've made an equality, you've diffused the power of the word. The word has been diffused upon everyone. Right now, the left wing have used the word to say everyone can be racist except white people. Only white people are not allowed to be racist. Right? This is the problem. So I intend to destroy that uh, by my mean by making casual racism fun again. Right? Because either white people can use the word or no one can use the word. Now, would you go, go into the camp that says no one should use the word? Okay, peace. I don't necessarily repeat that. Those are the yep. only, um, what are the, give me some more. Um, and also, and cool. <laughs> Nigga is just a word. It's just a sound that your mouth makes. Absolutely. Latin for intended black. Purpose by um, but as I said, if it's somebody's intention to cause harm, or to cause violence to come about, I believe that this is what should be addressed rather than what words, what method they're using to bring that about. Yeah. And this is the, um, <laughs> this, this is what we should be challenging. This is the idea that we should be um, challenging in, t in terms of what is it that makes a person want to carry out violence or make, make violence. Um, and now if you look at it, if you look at the legal structure, because the law is very important, what does the law say? And there's only two grades. There's absolute free speech, and then in Western jurisprudence, there's free speech with the clause exception incitement to violence. So I told all these people right now to kill you, right? Right now. I'm inciting all of them. I'm going to kill him, kill him, kill him. I'm inciting violence, and that's the only legal right in the law for me to be culpable of a crime. So the Western justice over centuries of evolving thinking have said that's the only soft line amongst the free speech absolute. So if I went down the street with 10 guys going, here's a black guy, nigger, 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 let's hang him up. I should be guilty by my words under the law of incitement to violence. I can go to prison for it. Would you say uh, your words? Would you say that your words saying uh, New Zealand uh, was target practice? Would you say that that is an incitement to violence? No. Why not? Because who am I? So, uh, what does incitement to violence mean? What does target practice mean? Okay. So what does target practice mean? 
you tell me. Well, I mean, you're, you're, do you know what target practice? Means? I know what it yeah. means. What you wrote it. So what yeah. did you mean by target practice? So what I did, and I was, I was made, I was proven correct. What I was doing was saying, if you read the manifesto, have you read the manifesto? Mm -hmm. You have. Okay, I can do pop quiz very soon about that. But if you've, uh, if you've read the manifesto, you'll realize what he was saying is that these are the first people who are going to attack mosques, and they're going to be first in a series of such attacks, like Dylan Roof did. So by me saying target practice, I'm making a propositional claim, this is not the last time an attack will happen. So and is that then, like, and another fact. attack has happened, so my statements have been vindicated. No, it's pointing out the facts, the Correct. truth. Yeah. So you're not justifying the New Zealand attack? I'm not justifying the New Zealand attack. Are you justifying the violence? The violence, was, just the violence was illegal. It's inevitable. Is it immoral? It's inevitable. Uh, morality is, I don't know, define morality. Uh, Why is it inevitable? <laughs> Well, why do you think? No, 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 I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Why do you say it's inevitable? Well, do you, wouldn't you agree it's inevitable <laughs> that uh, intervention in the Middle East results in Muslim terrorism? No, 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 we're talking about New Zealand. I know, but I'm giving, you, I'm giving you a similar example. Now it's been reversed. What's been reversed? Well, now, um, you know, because there were all this pressure that white people have to go through in the West. What pressures? Laws. Um, what pressures do white people have to go through? The Explain. fact that they're forced to um, live with people that they never voted to come into the first place, you know, it's been taken out of their hands and now they feel threatened and it's going to be like, you know, typical tribalism, which happens to all races regardless if you're white, black. There's a white existential crisis in the West right now. Yeah. That's why so Trump's don't you, in power. Wouldn't you agree that it, because of those pressures, it's inevitable that you're going to get, get some loons that are going to... Uh, explain react. that again. I didn't quite get what you said about the pressures. Just explain again. Then I can decide if I agree with you or not. Um, all right. When you, um, when you force a particular group of people to have to live with people that they might not want to and they have no say, they can't change the law, you know, they're going to be completely, um, you know, sued <laughs> if they say I want a white only space or white only business or whatever and all that pressure is just going to make people feel like I have no choice but to decide to do those. Own yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Let me define it then. Who's the other group of people? So you said other people. Can you make it more clear to the camera? Oh, oh, it's up, oh yeah, it's other white people that are the elites that are causing this to the working class or whatever. You know. Okay, so it's like a class issue, like not a race issue. Is that what you mean by the other people? Or? It's no, it's racist. Well, well, yeah, yeah, but the race is the race is secondary. You know, okay. the, 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 the elites use other minorities to have the lower classes fight amongst themselves rather than because it, at least they're distracted from the real enemy. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. But you're to answer your question. Cool. So uh, go check out Mark Collette and Laura Towler's great project that just came out called We Were Never Asked, where they sent teams around England and had anonymous poll asking people what they thought about being replaced by non-native Brits. It could be white Russians, so there's an ethnic component, but they would feel the same way about white Russians replacing them. 70% of people said they were never asked them or against it. Like imagine if massive, what about that loads, imagine if millions of English people um, no moved into yeah. Japan, mm -hmm. and you know the <laughs> Japanese were getting under pressure and whatnot, and one was to say, oh, Japanese are going to go on a mass shooting white people. That's, and he's not saying that because it's a threat. He's just claiming a, he's like putting down a obvious, um, fundamental reason of tribalism and why people in group uh, preference. Can I say, do you sympathize then in some ways uh, with the motives of the these mass shooters that may be based in their, say, indig indigenous countries that may be, uh, you know, frustrated or feel sort of a yes. grievance towards a mass immigration and decide to, you know, do a madness and shoot people. I, 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 I Would can, you sympathize I, 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 I can understand it. Okay. I mean... Would you... Okay, you can understand it. Yeah. yeah. yeah can I, answer that I, I can understand why um, Muslims would be on a terrorist attack. doesn't mean I have to empathize with it. No. Oh, so you don't empathize with um, terror? Um, you don't empathize with this? No, no, no. Right, right. It's, it's, understa it's, un it's, a, it's understanding. Yeah. You know. So you don't empathize with loss of life. <coughs> hmm? with loss of life. You don't empathize. With that. Well, loss of life is happening all the time. Yeah, you empathize, but when you hear it all the time, you come, you can become a bit immune to it. You know. Oh, oh yeah. immune to it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm immune to hearing um, victims of white women gangs. I hear it all the time, and I don't, it no longer hits me anymore. All right, let me let me reverse the question then, uh, yeah. if I may, if I yeah. may. So if it was reversed, right, say, because um, we've already painted the scenario, if it was immigrants coming to the country and a white man had decided to shoot them up, you could understand that. Yeah. What if it was Brits abroad in Japan and a Japanese... Perfectly understand, yeah, yeah. You would understand that as yeah. well. Japanese position, okay. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. 
the body doesn't like, you know, make you any know difference how English here. are awful in Spain. You know, they just like you create litter or just drink. And can I? Throw up. I just want to say one thing. Let me say one more thing before, before, before you say something. Wanna, when you say you way. understand, I just want to go deep into that. When you say you understand, do you say that you could understand? Sort of, you could put yourself in his shoes and feel like, yeah, I kind of agree with why he's done that, or like, could you just define what you mean by understand? Because I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's a great area where you're saying you agree with it or you don't agree. I'm with sure. It. I'm sure everyone's gone for that moment where they just wish they could go on a killing spree. It's only for a um, for a brief set of time, but in that moment and what to do with it yeah 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 so when Liz asked me and he asked us about the New Zealand manifesto I doubt he's read it but I've read it three times about 75% of it aligns with the manifesto of Trump parties general agreement it's pretty mainstream conservative stuff immigration and integration he wasn't a white supremacist he wasn't even a racial supremacist he was a racial separatist he'd been around the world he'd seen other cultures what they were like he wanted his own to be his own what he couldn't do and what he didn't do was be able to control his impulse not to act. So his answer is his frustration. We see that with many young white males as we pipeline them up towards white consciousness. But Ralph, will we you see them frustrated. Will huh? you condemn him? Why would I condemn or condone anything? Do you condemn what happened in 1527? What happened in 1527? <laughs> you don't know what happened, right, sir. So the absurdity, I'd leave that right <laughs> tell, now. Tell, so, tell me what happened so, and I might condemn uh, it. Okay, I will do in a minute. So if you look at New Zealand's manifesto, I'm answering this guy's question. Are you going to condemn a terrorist attack? But let me answer this question Muslims. before, and then you get to the heckling in a second. So if you look at the New Zealand manifesto right, right, that he brought up, so a lot of those points would align with things like anti-immigration positions, concerns about immigration, you know, reactions to Islamization and attack. And what he did, which is wrong with Dylan Roof, is he decided to take upon himself Uncle to Patel, use a political... Uncle Patel, do you condemn it? That's to, what we just want to know. You're I don't know. Uh, oh, my answer is I would never condemn or condone anything. Condemn or condone anything that someone else asks me to. I don't give you the right to ask me to. You, you promoted it as target practice. That is... That is even less than a he pointed out that's a fact. Pointed that's out. A, to me that's an incitement to violence no, he pointed to you out, he pointed but you should dig it up with the crown prosecution service and i doubt they'll agree with you but if I, you sincerely I, believe I predict, it so well, i could go predict. to prevent refer me to prevent and the cps just and we'll like I, that. Well, we're well, giving you not like the crown I, prosecution just, just like service. I, well, just like just like uh, i predicted with max that he would end up in prison where the far right now have nothing to do with him and he's just left to write in prison for 12 months Red cat boy, everybody. Do you feel uh, bad I for that? I predict you will be up in court on uh, hate speech. Okay. So I can see, I can see, I can see, yeah, but I can see how no, no, but I, no, but I can see like you look like a soothsayer, like a hippie who predicts things and stuff and reads tea leaves. I can see that. So, but anyway, back to the serious conversation. Yeah. See, um, Heckling aside. Go on, Leon, you are really drilling me here. Yeah. To, to, to try and get about the um, <laughs> sure. situation where we can have open and honest dialogue about <laughs> sensitive issues. Race, yeah. 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 Um, you said, I don't know, is it that you want to see people saying nigga and packy freely, like just for the sake of it? I don't know. I want to people, for people's self consciousness to rise so they can see the context in which the word is being used, as opposed to allowing the left wing to use it to keep minorities and everyone else on their left wing progressive plantation. I want them to be able to see that there are two worlds. Give me a, give me a For them, I'm not black, so it doesn't make a difference with black. I'm brown, so I could be offensive. I mean, God knows I get enough insults all day. Backy, 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 all I nonstop. Uh, no, I don't no, see no, any no, great no, fight no, from no, the no, left no, for my right to the brown person. I don't see the left rising up for me. Right? Paint the environment like that the general man's gonna go through. Where, where, um, it's like it's, it's acceptable for people to put people nigger, hacky, these things like that. I don't think it's acceptable to be rude. But so for example, do you think the word nigger used in a rap song is wrong? <laughs> or by some white people. I think it's wrong. Or by white people <laughs> rapping. I go, yeah, my nigger this, I'm going to cap you nigger in a song, nigger, 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 cap. Do you think that's also, I mean, because you're accusing me of the word nigger. Accusing so, you? No, no, accusing me of saying the word might be. I'm not, 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 I'm not accusing you. No, right. yeah. no you, 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 you've admitted to saying it in a... Um, Intentionally derogatory manner before. Correct. Yeah. So in a free speech I've asked you about, like, yeah. like, why are you Oh, because that's quite easy. So I always treat people with respect. If I don't get the respect, if someone doesn't disrespect me, they don't get to define the parameters of my response. Basically, I'm saying... Right. So if you insult me, I can insult you however I like. Basically, what I'm right. saying is that, um, to a degree, I agree that um, we need to desensitize words. What? Yeah. How we're going to go about doing that is where we've probably got some... Correct. I have an idea for 2020, which I'm going to be running and testing. Because, because like yeah. I said, I've, I've come from an environment where, back in the day, people used to say nigger, 
because they're frustrated with against black people. They don't yeah. like black people. Yeah. Strange, like it used to happen to me. Yeah, of course. We just yeah. start fighting yeah. because not because they're saying nigger, because yeah. they can't express their feelings and they, they can't they negotiate. They're trying to a response. And but they can't negotiate the violence that they feel inside them. They have no way of entertaining a dialogue. Back to my original thing, what I was saying, they have no way to have the dialogue where the words reduce the violence. When they can't control it, they might break into violence. For example, because they're having the control, the weak impulse control. But ultimately, the evolutionary success would be to escape that act of violence. So the only way out to peace is by moving up the ability to control your weak impulse and use words to violence. That is the holy ground for all of us. How right? do you think you're going to bring it about? Practice? Practice. Practice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no. Give, well, give an example. Give an so, example. for example, I want people to be able to speak freely and not be stigmatized for using racial Say language. Say speak freely. Like, give me a specific well, example. The left has always controlled language. They and, have. You know, what things used to be so normal to say have now become really taboo. Uh, so the left have always reversed. controlled language. Like, for the last, give, yeah, give examples 60s. of, you know, figures that have controlled language. Oh, easy. So, gender oh, pronouns. Well, racism, uh, well, well, the word good. racism, for starters. Okay, okay, word racism. That's a left. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tiger, you like this one? Adaptation. Huh? Okay. Okay. Who <laughs> can find racism? Who can from the left find racism? I think it was... Um, it was it's it's came from it. Did, did it start? Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, go ahead. Go join in, man. You say, you say the left controls the narrative. Particularly when we're talking about... Yeah, the they, build, they build these new terms, these new words. Or... So like, when we're talking about the N-word, right, we use an example of rappers using the N-word. From yeah. what I understand it, the rappers were trying to, I guess, reclaim this word, which had historically been derogatory, right? Meaning that they were trying to kind of like make it more kind of relatable to each other, not as opposed, not for anyone else to use. So that's them recapturing it. So what puts you in a position where you're eligible to use that? Are you Because they don't own the word. Are you of African American descent? No, they don't own the word. That's are you of African American descent? No, that's what gives me my right. So you're not using it in, you're not using it, one second, you're not using it in the paradigm that they're using. It, Correct. Right? So you're comparing a completely different like paradigm yes. or framework Correct. to your framework, which Correct. is the nationalistic kind of like olden way of derogatizing or dehumanizing someone and then comparing it to the light-hearted humor of rappers who refer yeah. to each other in a light-hearted way in order to reclaim that word. Okay, so, so they're, com they're not comparable for a okay. first. So the question you didn't keep talking because you have four questions in there. So I, I have a question. I have a question. Oh, I have, have a question <laughs> that I can sum into one, <laughs> okay. into one instead okay, of four. So, so let me try it this way. You, when you say the black rappers control the word to use by themselves, where does my authority I come? So where does my authority come to use that word? You don't give me the authority of which words to use. I okay. give that authority to myself. Okay, so wicked. You are not positioned to give me okay, the words, wicked. right? So you don't give the you don't give yourself any authority, right? I if do. the police and the state decide tomorrow that that word is illegal, your authority is is non It's I'm not happy that, I'm happy to take it on the state, but you're not the so state, and I don't. This idea, mind. this idea of giving yourself power and yeah. saying X, Y, and Z word, no, it's what the state allows you to do no. it. If the police here decide that the use of that word, just as demonstrated with Tan when he came to that park, the use of that word yeah. is problematic and would cause civil unrest. Problematic is be, a left-wing term. You would be, yeah, it's a really good left-wing term as well. You would be removed from the park. So okay. when you're talking about the power that you ascribe yourself yeah, to, I'll tell you why say wrong. this word. I'll tell you why you're wrong quickly. Well, I haven't finished. Yeah, I haven't but finished. you have to make it shorter. I'm, I'm not sure I, I want to hear long dialogue. My, yeah. my populace and my kind of like yeah. audience yeah. has a little bit longer attention span. So oh, yeah, I can yeah. actually go on, yeah. but please yeah, but answer, the audience, question, yeah. answer the question. Yeah. Answer the question. Answer the question. So the, uh, let me ask you a question this way. So when you say the authority of the state, you're correct, but here's why you're wrong, because it's secondary. The, the state only reacts to me having first said the word. The state cannot prevent me using the word. They can react to me using the word. I do. So no, you're wrong. I am free to use the word, no, no, no. and then that's called you're conflicting. Conflict. You're hang conflating hang freedom. Hang on. I didn't power, interrupt you. But I you're didn't conflating interrupt freedom you. with power. So I didn't interrupt you. So when you say that's wrong, that's just structurally wrong in, in political theory. I either used to use the word like go fire in a theater. The state have not muzzled me physically, and then the state will use its power as act as a consequence reacting to my word. Okay. If you believe, or the CPS believes some use of my words is illegal, I hope a Majesty's Crown Prosecution Service I immediately step up to their task. Okay. Okay. Can I just laughably, say quickly? Just two seconds, two seconds. Yeah. Laughably, laughably, you're conflating freedom with power. The power would be the ability to say something and not feel the repercussions or the consequences. That's after. your definition. That's power. That's no, that is the definition of power. Your definition. You've restructured it for Good some reason and conflated it with freedom. Oh, God. God. Yeah, I was going to say about that point where you said that it's uh, reactionary uh, and they, they can't prevent you from saying that. Well, um, if I'm correct, right? Tan uh, used the word nigger and he got uh, 
criminalized for it and he was actually sent to jail so you know it's not really so he was he was he was he went to he went to uh he was, he was locked he up sent to jail for yeah. so, so he was arrested i know Tam. he was he was he was, he was arrested he was arrested so in a way they are preventing you from saying it so they are they're trying in some ways taking away your taking away your authority yeah, this but deep down what is the problem deeper down let's not be shallow about this deeper down since the 60s the five pillars of the left racism sexism homophobia transphobia now islamophobia used to paint this narrative of equalitarianism if i say something against you race is racism something against a woman sexism we on the right reject out of hand as absurd and will not entertain the narrative that says you accusing me of the word racism is some moral legitimacy i give you okay, i refuse so, your legitimacy okay. so here's the thing here's the thing when you define what left is defined as left yes in your narrow spectrum i can understand why it's hard I'm for you having quite a wide i can understand why it's hard for you to understand certain narratives i can understand that but Right now, you just conflated two things that are not are not comparable, right? Yeah. And I've just brought you the reason as to why that's not comparable. You can't answer that. Right? You, can't you think answer that. language isn't power? I already did. So that again? You think language isn't power? Say that again? The use of language isn't power. What does that have to do with the statement right now? No, it does, but yeah. So, again, the, com the two comparables that you conflated, right? You can't compare them. I didn't. Two rappers calling each other the N-words in comparison to yourself using it in a derogatory term. Non-comparable. 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 Non 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 you just saying it's non-comparable. One of my best friends is Swedish, and I call him my schoolmate all the time. He's got white hair, bro. And you know what as well, right? Ralph, right? If you're if you're trying to break the narrative, right, and redefine racism, you know, like, this is, this is, it, it, all, it started again, this process, it started before as well, where people, it, 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 evolutionary, it started before, where people decided, I oh, was going to define racism, and perhaps, you know, they, they, they in their minds felt that they had good intentions, right? But that didn't, that didn't quite, that didn't quite trickle down to the bottom. So even though your intentions may, in your, in your perspective, may not be bad, good man, you know why? It may not be poor you know why? It might trickle down, and you know, as, 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 as Leon said, you know, it can, it can, Perpetuate violence. Man, you keep stumbling upon the great question. That's a great question because if you look at the etymology of racism, you see when it came to the 30s and it was a quiet etymology. When we had civil rights in the 60s, you had the liberal whites fighting for racism, fighting on the behalf of blacks and minorities. And that, that happened until about the 80s until you see the first infiltration of the Marxist left and the progressive left, where then they take racism, redefine it, power plus privilege, and now the pendulum is swinging all the way back right, where we're going to take that racism structure and move it to race realism. We're going to take what you call racism, move it to race realism, and we're going to re-entertain those discussions. Because the liberals meant well, but you couldn't change the race realism. People were genuinely racist. The people hate black people. But there's still people that are racist. There's still people who hate black even, people. Even with, this, even with that definition. Yeah? Exactly. Even, that, even with that, that definition, you have objection to. Do you, do you believe genuinely that they, they share the similar interests with you, or is it, is it a simple? I know a lot of people and they have a spectrum of responses, but I'll tell you this: there are people who genuinely hate black people. Yeah, of right. Now they're currently still hate black people. The fact that the left have muzzled them with the word does not stop them hating black people, right? So when the pendulum swung from the liberal '60s for racism, worse, I think. it makes it much worse because they're not allowed a vehicle to express it, so they can negotiate it out. Like, because they told you can't, so they're not going to tell you I hate you, nigga. Because they can't say it. But they're feeling in their heart. How do you know they're racist then? But you say that these people are racist. Feeling, yeah, genuinely. I don't know what's in their heart. Because I talk to them. Yeah. Boom. Right. You want to do that? So you know how they feel. And that's how you negotiate the progress. Because of the big shouting. So you talk. You will never see the full Mainstream media with a professional. I actually don't media. No, no it is, no it is. Using all the mass monetization for foreign holidays and sad support. Mass media, I'm trying to demonetize. No money on Corrupt Mass so, media. Oh, really? so, so, quick so, question, quick question. I just wanted to, I just wanted to ask. Can I just finish? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Right. Uh, uh, Ralph. Um, yeah, so you said that these people are racist, right? And you know that they're racist, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but you still want to change the definition, uh, uh, and you know, and make it widespread in to, to, to the way to the way that people. You, the way that you see it, right? Okay, so because if you, but if you know it, that they're racist, why do you want to make it worse? Do you okay, well, it's we like, can look at like my mental motivation. Because for my belief, it's like the people are already racist, the next stage is violence. So that's what, that's what you want to take. No, 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 no. My motivation, I get to my meta motivations later. But what is the difference between the left and right in this story context? The left generally believe that you can explain society by abstractions downwards. 
right? Everything is a construct. The right belief that we can explain society bottom up by everything comes from nature. What we have in this racism and racist and nigger word like that is a pendulum swinging going, there are genuine people, white people or brown people. There are genuine brown people who hate black people. But what you're doing is you're preventing their speech expressing that so they can't negotiate it out. What you want is, what is the resolution? The resolution must be negotiation or violence. But what's the negotiation? You're doing it. I'm saying, so when you repress the negotiation, you're not allowing a category. you believe the first step should be to allow everybody to say nigger? Do you think that that would escalate or decrease? I believe it would be like letting the steam off the kettle. Yeah. Let me give you a story that's personal, Leon. My father immigrates to this country in the 60s. He's, he's darker you think? than this guy over here, my dad. He moved to a small Scottish fitting village and he's immediately met with racist abuse. And my mother was going to go on a tyrant. Just verbal. Yeah, yeah, verbal, 1960s. Imagine a small Scottish fishing village, darker than you, darker than you, my father, right? And my mother, my, my mother was going to go on the war path. My father said, no, let them express it. Let them bring it out. I am a stranger that they fear, don't like, and hate. And with, through that negotiation, either they accept me or they don't. A few years later, he's down the labor car, on the boat, in the football games, because that expression allowed them to negotiate knowing him. Now, when you have a white guy who wanders around going, I never talk to black guys, I fucking hate those niggas, right? He wanders around and he has nothing, it's inside him. He has no way to negotiate that because the left is saying, you can't even stop here. You're racist, stop here. You can't say this thought. There's no negotiation. Can I, so you can have I, a force that is in opposition, right? But how are they stopping it? This is, a, this is exactly what I want to point out. And this, this is the narrative of the, of the right. Biggest, this is yeah? one of the biggest fallacies of the right. You keep talking about the left as if it's this massive it political it. identity that actually does anything about people saying the N-word, whether that's white or not. So we have videos of Tucker Carlson saying the worst of religious shit. We have videos now and recordings definitely. of um, Richard Spencer saying yes. the worst yeah, of religious shit. Exactly, exactly. People before them who have preceded them have said worse stuff. Yeah. Nothing has resulted because of it. So when you're talking well, about the left no, no, stopping good. X, Y, and Z, can you give me any actual examples yes, of true. where the left has acted as a political identity or any kind of enforcing establishment 100%. to stop people saying the word? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so if you went to the HR department tomorrow, if you went to the media tomorrow, if you went to the academia and said the word nigger, what do you think the consequence would be? What would be the consequence? Yeah. An investigation into it. Okay, so you have immediately put up a social boundary barrier saying even the threat of being able to say what I think has been stopped. So human do you resources. think that man has not thought that thought in his head because he said you can't do it? Man has so, thought a lot of things. So two yeah. seconds, two seconds. Yeah, man has right. thought so, violence, seconds, but he doesn't seconds. act on it, you know? Two seconds. Okay. Well, that's two seconds. It. Human resources, human yeah. resources mm -hmm. is the left political entity that you're bringing forth Correct. as HR something that pushes forward. forward. Correct. Oh God, yeah. So I've worked in like large corporations where HR departments are, you know, Jamie in schools, I'm sure the same. Yeah, and anyway, you've got cool. any HR department, any large organization, so human pro, resources, pro human resources. LGBTQ, pro racism, sexism. Even, even, even in the Catholic school, there's a boy who's allowed to be in a girl's uniform. The boy who's allowed to be in a girl's uniform. So, okay, cool. so okay. what happens to a black Catholic person, school. right, that right. says the N word That's to another black person and they're brought to That's human resources? What happens? It's just considered completely the human resources. Black person is a human resource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah. They're taken People out of the job because they're seen inconsistent with the policies of the job or the actual yeah. conduct. Yeah. Of the my best people. friend, Swedish so friend, like, he calls him my snow nigger. Anyway, yeah. anyway yeah. it's a zero tolerance <laughs> policy. <laughs> he's 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 That's a correct use of the word. Say that again. He's a fucking snow. Look at him. He's got blue on his right. So, where's the human resources in rap? I don't. Where are the human resources? I can talk about package. Sorry, but you're conflating rap. You're conflating rap and hip hop yeah. with the working, the work, sorry, the working class. You're conflating that. No, no, like, don't punch it. Human resources, one second, one human resources, one second, one second. Human resources from what I know, yeah. is within the professional sector, yes? Right, right. Sure. So, how are you conflating rap and hip hop with the professional you sector? You can check out documentaries. Uh, just, just recently, I saw documentaries about. Uh, there was a fellow, a producer, an American, black American producer. The, the, the N-word is used quite a lot through that documentary. What? Black, black people talking to other black people. About, about black people. people. But once again, people. you are using hip-hop you know? and you're using an entertainment so industry. That doesn't care. really have... We're talking about We're talking about on a professional setting. If you yeah, go they're, they're to a... One second, one second. Because musicians if we're talking about someone. entertainment, one second, yeah. if we're talking about entertainment, mm -hmm. we have a culture in which entertainment has casually allowed the rape of women, mm -hmm. the abuse of women, 
Stalin, mm -hmm. the absolute derogatory use of um, blackface, etc. Yeah. Right? Uh, Within Justin these Trudeau. industries, Justin nothing, Trudeau. nothing has, nothing <laughs> has happened to them. So when you're right. using the entertainment industry as an example, you completely. No, I don't. You, I don't think the casting couch is rigged. So there again, I don't think the casting couch is rigged. Well, when someone culture. is kind of like, I guess, under duress, well, no one wants it. Under duress. Get, as long as she can get that yeah. good role, then hashtag you know, me too. Jamie, that's do anything. She, Jamie, that's pretty she, fucked up. She'll do yeah. anything to get that. Fuck Jamie, hashtag me too. No, 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 no. It's in women's biological nature to be to, raped. No, 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 no. To use their sexual market value in order right. to get resources. Absolutely. Okay, so Ooh, if, that's a big statement you made. If a culture, on the money. What's very big statement. If a culture, a lot of women have issues. If a culture pushes out alcohol, if a culture pushes out drugs, if a culture makes it hard for people of a working class to actually gain some kind of social mobility, right? Did Harvey Weinstein create the culture? Say that again? Did Harvey Weinstein create the culture? Did he perpetuate it? I hope well, so. everyone perpetuated, both the women and the men. I agree, but at the same time, does Lots that make it right? Lots of young girls went willing to give up right, money so and he's, fame. He's, he's, he's in a situation where this is how the <laughs> yeah, chess game goes. So let me get this straight, let me get this straight. Just because yeah, for some no, reason we seem to have derailed. I don't want to yeah. get back to the question yeah. of the N-word, right? Yeah. You're making it clear that the rape of women in entertainment industries, right, is permissible because there's an agreed on culture. One second, one second, one second, one second. It's agreeable mm -hmm. that certain people give up their freedoms, give up their consent, give up all of these things, thus endangering, thus endangering little girls, women, and young boys to rape. You're saying that it's permissible no, no. because there's a culture there. No, no, we're, well, if we're talking about pedophilia, that's a different thing. But, no, um, we're talking about just rape in general, regardless if it's a girl, if it's a young person or an old well, person. Because on the um, alimonies of these celebrities who are now no longer have their um, sexy looks in order to get money, they have to now cry. Oh, I was raped by Harvey Weinstein because you know he, you know, he, you know, there's no proof of it, you know. And the majority of the girls that came out for the Me Too movement are still within their prime age. They're not in their 50s, they're not in their 60s, they're not in their 40s. And most of the times, actresses' show lives tends to be up 40 upwards. Right, but, so, how do you, but how do you know they're being genuine? So there again? How do you know they're being genuine? If I'm putting my rational glasses on, I don't. How do you know that they're being disingenuous? Because you're the only one that's asserted that these women, for some reason, have gone looking for that culture. I don't I still want to give Harvey Weinstein a fair trial. So there again? I would still want Harvey Weinstein to have a fair but trial. But you've already put yourself in the decision, right, of supporting the fact that these women probably went seeking it. You've already stated that, but you've, I've literally just conceded that. I have no evidence on the other side, but yeah. you seem to be of the, of the mindset that the women were looking for it. Where do you get that from? Well, we agree that um, um, sports stars, you know, get sperm jacked, right? I agree. Right, so why isn't it unreasonable to say that women who want to get the fame and pleasant glamour will literally throw themselves at these um, producers and then get the parts? Like, oh, who's that, who's that um, blonde girl who got a big role in um, Shakespeare in Love, you know, because she opened her legs for Harvey Weinstein in order to get that? And she got a fucking Oscar, you know? But that and then, you know, he, she loses her looks later on and then joins into the Me Too movement. But that doesn't you know? take away from the fact that, again, this is the abuse of women. And then on top of that, the whole point is that you're trying to prevent a culture, right, that is, I guess, c consistent in perpetuating that women's values are based on their bodies. Whether or not a couple of people fall into that and perpetuate that and being women, mm -hmm. how does that permit it for the rest of us? I don't know how to, how, to, how to view that. I mean, because put it this way, you know, put it, it this way, put it this way. There were people, there were slavers, right, or slave slaves, yeah, who sold out their own slave fellow in, right, to get a better position in the household. Yeah. How does that permit slavery? If he then says, "Oh, you know what, the master treated me fine," how does that permit slavery? I don't. Any system would um, have those um, issues um, because there's always going to be a hierarchy. But the point know. is, it doesn't permit the deeper abuses and the deeper issues. It doesn't permit it. They're not excuses for as to why these systems exist. But if there's so many different systems that work on the same fundamental values, that in order to climb up the hierarchy, then people are going to use whatever means in order to do that, whether it's they're intelligent, whether it's their good looks. Or but there's rules in there's rules in place to make sure that people don't do that. So putting someone, you know, putting someone under duress in terms of like you will get this career X, Y, and Z. 
if you do this X, Y, and Z for me. Okay. One, that's already discriminatory because not all men can do that already, right? So it's, it's, discrim it's discriminatory practice. Mm -hmm. But furthermore as well, it has nothing to do with the actual career. Like a woman being able to open her legs, as you put it, or, you know, do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Do X, Y, and Z sexually has nothing to do with whether or not she can perform on camera or not. Right. Uh, it's, it's really competitive, and, you know. But that does not <laughs> permit abuse and rape. That does not permit it. Com competition, regardless, mm -hmm. that does not permit abuse and rape. Neither does competitive societies, you know, permit slavery. Right. But so, how, but how, but how do you fully stop slavery? Say that again. Well, how do you fully stop slavery in a system where everyone's about their individual freedom? That's a completely different subject. Right. If you want to go into that subject, we can start a new video. Oh, but, yeah, but if you're going to ask me how can you stop people, I guess, going into industries and saying that, you know, offering themselves or whatever, right? Yeah. You and can then make I, I understand rules, there are people rules. who are legit victims out of that, but in the end of the day... Do you? Yeah. I mean, you literally just said no. a couple of women go seeking for it when I question exactly. whether or not. And then there's also the victims who just wanted to be actors and, you know, are then in a situation where they weren't exactly asking for it. But, um, you know, it's a mixed bag of those different I mean, types. And we cannot say that, oh, it's mostly the women who are victims and only But no, some, one's, no one's saying either or other. But I think the only person that's taken, like, a predestined point of view or you know, a stance beforehand is yourself in saying that certain women were looking for it. And the question is, you don't know whether or not the person offered it first or the woman offered it first. Neither of us know that. Right. So I guess one, one, one thing that's really problematic is the fact that you take the automatic stance that the woman all of a sudden is the one who presented herself and said, you know, if you give me this role X, Y and Z. We don't know that. Okay. You don't know that. Okay. So that's pretty problematic and then you kind of like start to diminish any kind of credentials that legitimate victims would have in situations where someone puts them under duress to sleep with them mm -hmm. if they want a job. Yeah. So do you not see the problematic nature of that? Yeah, of course, you know, human nature is inevitably fucked, you know, but, you know, again, you, you have to um, view it as it being a mixed bag and you know, like how, how do you fully, um, can you fully take a, um, stop a certain thing from happening mm. without becoming a authoritarian dictatorship? But I don't think it's authoritarian to have already in position rules that do you say that you shouldn't really be putting up sex as, you know, some kind of incentive for someone to give you a job. I'm pretty sure that's not something that's authoritarian. I think that's just normal standards. Well, so, can you stop a, um, a um, I don't know, a landlord for having this particular hot woman skipping her rent because she gets a shag out of it? Without a doubt. Really? Without a doubt, you can. Really? Of All course, right. you can. Why do you think? Why do you think things are electronically kind of like I guess fire the banks, right? The banks. Mm -hmm. The bank is a great system because now we can electronically try, like I guess watch our transactions, right? right. So m rent is a monthly thing that comes out of your paycheck. Mm -hmm. It's a consistent payment that comes out of your paycheck. Mm -hmm. If there is an irregular kind of like coming out of paychecks in terms of rent, etc., right? If someone was really adamant in watching whether or not abuses of power were done, those things could be flagged up. There are multiple ways in our new technological society to spot whenever there are red flags. So in terms of like, how would you do that? There's so many practical ways. Okay. And then there's a the question of why are the payments inconsistent? How is she, you know, if the payments are inconsistent and why is it coming from this bank account one month and then this other bank account one month? There's so many questions that can be asked. Okay, but if the landlord values the sex as much as her getting that rent, you know, I don't, you know it's just like, he can like make a completely separate account to make it out that the money is still coming in even though she has let's not just paid say anything, you know. <laughs> let's just say for argument's yeah. sake, he sends the money into her account, yeah? I mean, even then, like, I'm not saying that, you know, the, the system would be that scrutinizing, like, scru scrutinizing, right? Mm -hmm. It would be that scrutinizing that it would look at every single little transaction and so on. But even now, when I get a payment that's a bit off, my Monzo or my bank account basically flags it up and says, this doesn't look like a familiar, a fam familiar transaction that you would do, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say he sends the money into her account and then she sends it back into his account, etc., right? Yep. 
he's already put down as the person to receive the money. Do you not think that the system would flag up the fact that this person who's set to receive money is sending money into someone who is set to receive money from? Do you not think that would be a red flag? And an inconsistency if the algorithm was there to spot whether or not the money is coming from the person? Yeah, well, it depends what sort of service that they're providing, you know. I think you're you're reaching a bit much. You're reaching a bit much. Yeah, maybe. You're reaching but a bit much. I mean, like prostitution has been the oldest profession in ever. You know, it's true. But prostitution is very different to being kind of like I guess coerced into into a career sexual. Okay. Completely different. So you know, sex work and free consensual sex work is completely different to good. you'll get a job. But um, you yeah, coming back at all? <laughs> Yeah, but, no, but um but yeah, but like I said, like there's always gonna be people who are better looking, people who are stronger, people who are smarter and inevitably they're gonna climb the hierarchy and Ooh. you know, make use the best of their um their skill set or the or the not or the lottery they got. You know, but then ultimately yeah. if someone's good at murder then they can just do that. Yeah. To kill off their competition. Right. And they'll get away with it as long as they can obviously you know get away with it like we have no idea of how many um billionaires or um, corporatists or politicians have gotten away with pedophilia or, or but keep that's, killing but that's all so, again that's and that's all. not and i don't accept that but has it is it any different to what happened in feudal times you know is it something that we cannot really escape from fully you know well quite heavily yes i'd say a lot of it is a lot less predominant now particularly considering everything is either CCTV observed or electronically kind of like um, what's the word tracked mm -hmm. like we have so many ways to prove whether or not someone has pretty much been inconsistent with our conduct conduct of law or morality mm -hmm. so you know feudal times like you're talking about a bit different because if someone goes missing there's not much of a not much of a system there or an infrastructure in place to notice that one this person hasn't turned up to work to this person no like they didn't have the kind of resources and stuff in feudal times whereas now i'm getting away with murder is probably a lot harder than it used to be a lot harder oh yeah so in terms of like just answering the question um for me personally i don't I mean, really smart murderers um, get away with it you know uh, but <laughs> a bit of a grim world, but just back on the question, yeah, yeah. just generally, because again, it's just gone off and yeah, Ralph's yeah, yeah. run off as usual. A left identity or a left kind of like bubble that actually stops people from supposedly using certain words like the N word, making fun of people of LGBT communities, stuff like that. Like, where does this happen? Because from the most that I've grown up, I've been exposed to this kind of behaviour. Other people have been exposed to this kind of behaviour. And most of the times, it's just an experience shared. It's not a process of, oh, what happened to them after? You know, did you get them prosecuted or whatever? No, it's just a natural situation in which we've accepted, and a lot of people accept, that this is something that happened. So when you say the left stops people from saying X, Y, and Z, like, how do you mean? Physically or mentally? Well, or they, Well, they control the institutions, um, you know, um politicians, the educational system. We have a conservative government in the UK, mm -hmm. which we, is the they're Tories. Not, they're hardly conservative. We, what are they conservative? The Tories. What are they conservative? The Tories. Yeah, what, what are they conservative? They've taken... They, in, have, they have given in to almost every demand that the left has thrown at them. They've pretty much cut so much funding to public sectors, the police, the NHS, well, schools. Yeah, because, let's talk about... Yeah, let's talk about, we're so in debt, so we need talk to about, pay let's, back our again, debt. But again, this is just conservative narrative. Like, the idea of... The, you're saying that we need to pay into things by cuts. Imagine if we had why no not debt, just why ask, would we... Why not just ask people to fund the system more? Why not just ask people to pay more taxes? Well, even the, even the working even, class? Of course. All right, so you want to go, why not? You want to go like proper Scandinavia? Well, if we're going to complain about systems in our infrastructure, why are we not paying into I have no more? problem with paying taxes, it's just people are going to write in the streets. But again, know? again, yeah. we have conservative government over here, we have conservative government leading the free, supposed free world and the leading power mm -hmm. of the world right now, America. We have a massive uprising in terms of right-wing narratives and so on and so on, which are based on conservative values. How can you tell me that the left-run institutions, which elements... W w what institutions could you point to me that say that? Well, what institutions advocate for um, alt right things? Say that again? What institutions um, advocate for alt right agendas? What institutions advocate for alt right agendas? Do you know any alt right oh, billionaires um, or companies like oh, that? Did we not just have a bill against abortion passed in America in a day and age where we 
understand and agree that women have freedom to the autonomy of their own bodies? Uh, well, that's more of a Christian thing. Like, not really, not really. That is a classically, classically conservative narrative and classically conservative value, pro-life. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think the old right will really care about abortion, you know. Really? Dude. Yeah, either, I mean, we're talking about conservatism here. We're not no, even no, talking no, about the milk. Right. There's the milk coast conservative, which is like progressive, but still try to maintain a Christian. But Trump isn't all right, though. Trump is just a no, conservative. no, 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 no. He, you know, he's not all right. He's, yeah, but he's just a conservative. So yeah, he's just you conservative. Know, we're, we're, but, but, but I'm saying, like the conservatives, it's like having a battle. If you focus only on defense, then you're going to get harassed and by the enemy who's always going to be on the attack and you're always having to react to their moves um, well than ever attacking. So the Conservatives don't ever attack um, the left. Conservatives have been everything in attack. I'll give you an example. Right. When you say attack, right, it's almost the idea that someone is trying to come and take something from you. Yeah. Not really. Women's rights and women's freedoms is taking nothing from anyone. That's women's opportunity and really? that's women's freedom. So um, all these alimony laws and um, the um, family court system, I think, isn't um, humongously biased to the husband or the male. Well, again, if you're talking about like family laws and stuff, these are mostly reactions to what used to be patriarchal rule. I don't know what that well, has to do but, with leftist but, narratives. Well, because um, well, there's the argument that Karl Marx said that you had to destroy the family in order to create. Well, that's not change. what he said. That's not oh, what he said. He said that you have to reshape or restructure. Reshape, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Restructure the you destroy the nuclear family. I mean, you know. restructure the family unit is basically what he's saying. He's saying that you can't concentrate on the capital of the family because it dehumanizes every individual within the family and puts them down, reduces them to their numerical value. That's what Marx taught. Marx said that you should value human beings for human beings. So when you talk about supposedly Marx wanting to destroy the like nuclear family, I find it kind of ironic because he's trying to push a narrative in which you value people not based on what they can bring into your family economically or value, right? More just because they are part of your inner collective. So, like, but surely, but surely if you have children, you see that as an investment for when you retire and you have someone to take look after you and inherit your property. Not necessarily, because a child should never be necessarily indebted to you at all. He does not make. Even though you he brought them she, into this world, alive. he or she does not make the make the choice to come into this world. Yeah, true. But they do not make the choice as to which family they are born into. So the responsibility and the onus is all on the individual, the two individuals that then decide to pre well, create a family. Well, right, but, uh, yes, there is a moral obligation to look after the elderly and stuff like that. But that pulls down to the, the freedom of the, the child born. Like that is a freedom whether or not they choose to. There is no kind of like, oh, like how many animal species do you see t caring for the elderly? Well, they're not much elderly because they're often eaten by the predators. <laughs> Fair enough. But again, how many, okay, how many animal species do you see just tend catering? to anything that isn't their immediate family. And when I say immediate family, I mean onwards, not back. Hey, welcome back to the park. We say long time no see. Yo, Mo B. 12 months band or 6 months? 6 months, yeah? You cool, yeah? Yeah, I'm good, bro. See you around. Sorry, what we we'll phrase that? Yeah, what are you saying? What animal species, right, if we're talking like Marxist theory, what animal species prioritizes or even at all allocates any resources backwards as opposed to forwards? We're the only, we're the only things on, on this planet that do that. I think chimps have known to um, share tools, you know. Not with the oldest, not with like the older generations. Really? With, the, with, the, with the forward generations, probably, but not with the older generations. All right. but, but, but this brings back to like, when we talk about bonobos, you know, they are a weaker species to their chimp cousins because they, um, the, 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 the women are mating with weaker men, which means it creates weaker generations of people. But yeah. again, that comes back to a conversation about what you value as strength. And in society, yeah, especially then, this contemporary society, yeah. what we value as strength back when does not compare to what we value as strength now. Yeah. Especially, say, in ancient Rome, ancient Greece, what they consider strength, when we can see this from all the statues, is not what we consider strength in modern day Elon Musk. Um, Elon Musk, uh, what's the Facebook guy, Mark Zuckerberg, yeah. etc. These are not, you know, the Leonidas's of back when. These yeah. aren't the Spartacus of back when. You right. know, they're our Spartacus now. They are our Leonidas now. This is what we call strength. So our opinion of what we call strength has always been constantly shifting, depending on what bars the means. And but would you accept there's a norm that goes out in history that at least 
as its basic roots can always like be adaptable to any environment whilst strength like we said here only exists because of the excess excess resources we have and the certain infrastructure and you know and you know I don't know how long this it's can go true, on. It's true but how long can you live in a stone age survivalist environment? Almost, ine you almost inevitably. Well progress. Really? Yeah 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 well, uh, well like I said. Human history hasn't shown that human beings will build societies wherever they go. Right. But, the fact that we're here in this... But, like, assume, but they get to a certain success and then they're going to go complete collapse and then the cycle returns again. I mean, again, that's... Is, uh, again, going we back become to... become a victim of our own but, success, you know. But going back to... Nature to, finds a way. Just going back, <laughs> going back to, again, the political de identity of the left and supposedly what these people who enforce X, Y, and Z, we still haven't provided a valid or consistent kind of, like... Force well, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, in their minds, they think this is progressive, this is healthy and whatnot, but they're not understanding that these things have already existed in the past and inevitably results in the whole society collapsing. Um, again, and the, defu and the default position will always be a very hard patriarchy, you know, tribal. Um, again, that doesn't have anything to do with what we were really talking about in terms of the left enforcing supposedly people not being allowed to say the n-word or people not allowed to say x y and z against people who don't prioritize heteronormative kind of narratives well, that, well, well, like, why, well why would you want um, a white thug to have the power of just saying one word to get you so rattled up that well, the better. question is, it's not necessarily the razzling up, is it? That's not what people fear. When people talk about like the using of the N-word and the P-word and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's the idea of creating a consensus in which it, it's normal and okay to dehumanize people. Because it's never really the kind of like beginnings that ultimately lead to X, Y, and Z, right? Very the Nazi party very slowly kind of grinded its way through propaganda. Yeah, it's exactly the same, yeah, it's exactly same so, technique, you know. So the question is, why would you want to encourage that form of behavior? And then even if, even if let's just say, even if our society supposedly goes against encouraging that form of behavior, which it does to an extent, where are the supposed enforcers that you're claiming to stop you from doing so? <laughs> well, I mean, the question was for Ralph anyway, yeah, yeah. so you're just kind of like proxy, kind of like, you, you're a proxy Ralph today, apparently, so... Oh, know. no, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question, you know. Well, they, there is none. There is no establishment. There is no establishment. Otherwise, we wouldn't have free speech as, you know, a talking point now. We wouldn't have it, so... To my detriment and to most people's detriment, I'd say to everyone's detriment, most people are allowed to get away with saying the most foulest stuff. And it's true. Like, Steve was um, calling out a gentleman um, earlier, obviously, and he's someone who kind of like speaks out apparently against, up, up with Andrew Chowdhury and is part of that narrative. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, our laws are in such a way that he's allowed to literally dance on the edge of what is not terrorism what is it and that's where steve kind of like ran away because it's like i asked him well what's he convicted of if he's not convicted of anything then unfortunately he's not really a terrorist yeah. and that's the unfortunate nature he has to do something that extreme but i'm asking why do we want to keep it at that limit why do we not want to like maybe why do we not maybe want to bring it back to a point where it's like if someone is even indulging in this narrative it's already a clear sign that this person should probably be under watch and probably be someone that, you know, the judicial system pays close attention to. That's, that, that would be my answer, personally. Yeah, but if only we had enough uh, resources to spy on anyone who had that slight opinion, you know? Well, we do. Do we? We have I more mean, than enough resources to allocate people's data in terms of like where they want to, where they want to spend their money. Throw adverts out and blah blah. I'm pretty, like, sure, I'm pretty sure the guy who did the Manchester um, bomb attack was under surveillance. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Still but he was another one dancing on the edge. Yeah, but like again, but yeah, but again you, we we got like a, a a humongous amount of people who are on that mm. potential um, edge where they yeah. could do something. And yeah. There's no way we can react to it in time. But the problem is like when you have that edge. What I'm trying to say is when you have that edge where literally like the the point of being called a terrorist is where you actually do a terrorist act, right? My thing would be. Much earlier than that, 
where you engage in terroristic narratives. So narratives that are seeking dehumanization of certain people. And within that narrative of the gentleman over there, uh, Andrew Proudman and stuff, animated as it is, there is a level of this is kufar, this is not, right? There's an us, there's a them, right? And it's a thing of painting us as the more kind of like predominantly preferred and them as not. And we can do without them. And they also, this is where the language of dispensability comes around because they believe that kufars are dispensable, right? So then that dehumanizes people to the point where people think, well, I'm justified in killing them. So I would go way further than just allowing people to dance online. I would say people, if they indulge within that extremist narrative, need a further look into it. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty consistent on that, and this is why I call people like Steve out. I'm consistent on whether you're Muslim or not, I will call you out, so... Oh yeah, yeah, no, there's always that grey area where you don't know. You know, anyway, I gotta go. I actually was gonna, I was gonna go now because I was gonna go way earlier, but... Right. <laughs> I heard Ralph talk about the left, so I was like... Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to IT. But he's wearing a hat. This a hat. Hat. made in China. And that's I made got America, my hat with America great. I'm working. But you, I made a taxes. you look far you more ridiculous than him. You, are you look far elegance. more ridiculous. This is what you look like. And you are, like. are incapable of okay. understanding. Do you have that making people poorer? Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't make them richer. It doesn't make people poorer, means it makes you richer. That's what you forgot to say, isn't it? It makes you, you richer. Who, who and it you makes your child poorer. You see, yes, that's right. Mayhaving slaves is making society better.